Hello, hello, and welcome to the Nintendo Gems Podcast, Episode 2. I am Brayden, and I'm here with my co-host, Jake. Hey, how's it going, guys? Here to talk about some Nintendo news and gems, new games and old games alike. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, you can definitely find us on Spotify, on SoundCloud, and hopefully by the time you're hearing this, on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Maybe that's where you're listening to us right now. It'd be nice. And if you are... Rate us. Give us a review. Five, you could be our first five-star review. Woohoo! That would be really nice. <laughs> but what do you think, Jake? Should we should we hop into some news? Yeah, let's get right into it. All right. So first up is kind of a continuation of a story from last week that we covered the Joy-Con drifting issue and the class action lawsuit that is being filed against Nintendo. But it sounds like Nintendo has kind of had a, a turnaround. Um, they do not like the sound of that class action lawsuit at all. What, do you, what, do you, what have they told us? Okay, so Nintendo said um, that they're going to be giving basically full, full refunds to anyone who sent in their Joy-Cons to get replaced. And anyone that is going to get them in place now uh, is going to be free. Awesome. So, yeah, that's and pretty cool. In or out of warranty, is that right? Yeah. They just... Whether you've had your Switch since launch or not, if you're having drifting issues, they'll fix it. Yeah, and uh, Vice got from an anonymous source a, a memo from their tech team um, that said customers do not need to provide proof of purchase for Joy-Con repairs and that customer service representatives should just believe people, which is really cool. Yeah, really nice. Uh, it kind of sucks that like Nintendo had to be pressured with millions of dollars worth of damages or whatever, yeah. legal action. Yeah. But, you know, seriously, it's it's nice that they're you know, I can rest easy knowing if I have a drifting issue, I can just send it in and they're going to cover it. Yeah, I honestly considered saying my my Joy-Con that slides <laughs> off the side of my Switch has a drifting issue just to get it fixed. It drifts off the side, yeah, off the rail. Technically, it's, yeah. a sort, it's a kind of drift. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, maybe that's next. But yeah. So our next piece of news is going to be good for some Super Smash Bros. players. We have a new announcement coming up, uh, and it's more or less going to be, I think, just the release date for Hero, but there's a direct at the time of recording. It should be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Of course, right? The day before we record, or the day after we record. (laughs) Right, yeah, we're we're a little off timing there, but we're hoping that we'll get a release date for Hero, which they've been pushing back, and that they, uh, the Twitter account, I believe, has confirmed that version 4.0 of the game will be dropping as well. Mm -hmm. Probably some buffs and nerfs for various characters along with the release of Hero. Yeah, maybe a new mode or something. Because this is what happened when um, when Joker was released from Persona. Mm -hmm. Um, We got, I remember that was crazy the day that happened or the day before. Remember, there was just like a mini direct that like dropped on their Twitter and Mm -hmm. their Instagram and their um, YouTube. Like it was a 15 minute video. And I was like, this is just like, a mini smash direct exactly so maybe we'll get something like that tomorrow well in the stage editor like them dropping that with that was with joker right yeah at the same time that if they drop another mode quite that substantial that would be really cool yeah for sure i i still play smash bros on occasion but more content can't hurt right yeah i i mostly just play it with friends so Mm -hmm. like i haven't even touched that stage editor like i'm the guy that got mario maker 2 and is never going to make a stage yeah um i'm just gonna play them so i wasn't for me but like Mm -hmm. i loved seeing that there's more content yeah so like you just said it'd be cool if we got another another mode or something yeah uh so keep your eyes out on that i'm sure we'll cover whatever the announcements are next week but for now our next story is about doom We already have Doom 2016 uh, released on the Switch as kind of a... It's not quite a remaster. I guess it's just a port. No, it's just a port. It's just a not as good port. Yeah, but (laughs) it's a little It's cool that it's on there. Yeah, absolutely. And they're announcing... Well, they have already announced that three more Doom games will be released on the Switch. They're already out. Are they? Yeah. They Well, they day and date. Like, they were like, hey, this is happening. They're out now. Oh. They announced it at QuakeCon. Then I am behind. Yeah. So the, the first Doom and the second Doom, Doom 1 and 2, are going to be $5 a piece. Mm-hmm. And Doom 3, which was like a 360 PS3 game, is going to be $10. Very good. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've played the original Doom. I've not played Doom 2 or Doom 3. But I think once, once I'm kind of completely done... Or maybe not completely done, but once I'm tired with Ultimate Alliance 3 and Fire Emblem, I think I'm going to pick these up 
because I I love Doom. It's so much fun. So I got really excited when I saw that this got announced. Absolutely. And well, and I'm apparently behind, but I have Doom <laughs> 2016 for the Switch and mm-hmm. it really was fun. It, it, you know, kind of sloppy at points just because it the graphics were toned down and uh, but still a very fun game and I have not played any of the originals. Yeah. So. But that was that your first time playing Doom 2016 on the Switch? Ooh, yeah. You're missing out, dude. I know. Uh Doom I've not played it on the Switch, but just from what I've heard, you know, frame rate is stuck to 30. Mm-hmm. Um graphics are a little are a little grosser. Yeah. Um but I got that I got that when it came out on the PS4 and dude, that's a must play. Yeah. Like if you've got an Xbox or a PlayStation, you've got an Xbox, right? Yeah. So I'd say pick that up on Xbox. Doom Eternal comes out later this year, right? Which I'm super excited for. That's still kind of Switch news because it's also coming out on yeah. Switch. But um, or to the wise, if you're gonna play those games, get them on PC, PS4, or Xbox One. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> anyway, Wolfenstein Youngblood came out on Switch recently. Right. I've not heard great things about that game in general, but yeah. especially not the Switch version. We won't really be talking about that because Fire Emblem has taken has taken my life, yeah. um, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, if it's a Bethesda game, it's so cool. I love that they're on the Switch because mm-hmm. there are people that only have Switches that are being able to play these games for the first time on this new console and on the go, which is super great. It's a great alternative if you've already played the game. Um, but if it's your first time playing these Bethesda games, probably don't get them on the Switch. Yeah. I can't really speak for these. these, these I'm sure these older Doom games are going to be completely fine. Oh, yeah. Their, their quality is set. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. I've heard, I have heard some wonky things about the first one. I heard someone say on Reddit that like the music was weirdly slowed down in the first Doom or something. Interesting. Yeah, I can't really comment on that because I haven't gotten it yet. Yeah. I'm going to. So to be continued. We'll talk about that maybe next week. Good deal. Yeah. Our next news story is about Amazon and their Prime Video app. Uh, it is being discontinued on the Wii U. They will no longer be supporting it as of September 26th of this year, 2019. Uh, which is not going to affect me personally. I have we've moved on from the Wii U. Um, I thought everyone had. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm not super butthurt that they're discontinuing the support. Um, you know, people have plenty of ways to watch Prime Video these days, but still, you know, it, it's a changing of the time or something like that. You know, that the, the yeah. Wii U is becoming more and more outdated. Yeah, I um I just thought this was a really interesting story because well first of all, I I don't know. I didn't think any of these were still supported anyways, mm-hmm. honestly. So to see that this one is discontinued and that it's making news and stuff means I guess things are still being supported and people are still using it. Apparently somebody. Yeah, somebody is still using it. But yeah, but Amazon's leaving in September. I'm sure Netflix and Hulu and all the other apps will be soon soon behind yeah soon to follow yeah um so be prepared for that your wii u will be decreasing in functionality come (laughs) september 26th our next piece of news comes from the mobile side of nintendo's library they've kind of been expanding this uh but this is about dragalia lost it has now surpassed a hundred million dollars in worldwide player spending Uh, Out of 3 million downloads, it has displaced Animal Crossing Pocket Camp as the second most, most selling, best selling? Most Uh, highest grossing, I guess. There you go. (laughs) Highest grossing game for the Nintendo's library for iOS and Android. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes has the top spot with almost $600 million earned since it released. Uh, But Dragalia Lost, a name not nearly as prominent as Animal Crossing or Fire Emblem, is now second place yeah i have it on my phone uh, i barely touch it because i do not play games on my phone mm-hmm. like i have pocket camp uh, i have mario run mm-hmm. i have all the nintendo ones i think on my phone but i barely ever touch them it's not surprising to me to see that fire emblem heroes is so far and ahead the number one i think japan has got to have a lot to do with that as well well and and here i mean gotcha games like that where it's you put money in to try and get new heroes and the initial game is just fun. I got sucked into uh, Fire Emblem Heroes for about a month. Mm-hmm. So it's not surprising to see that it's... I never spent any money on it, but it's not surprising. And the thing about Dragalia Lost that makes it different than all the other games, at least compared to Pocket Camp and Heroes and even Mario Run, where they are all they all very much feel like mobile games, mm-hmm. Dragalia Lost really just feels like a game. 
Like, it feels like a full-fledged game with missions and everything that is just on the phone. Yeah. I can see Dragalia Lost being slightly altered and re-released on Switch uh, for $40 or $60. Very interesting. And being a just full-fledged game. That's Dragalia Lost is the one mobile game I haven't played. What are they spending money on? It's been a, it's been a while, yeah. honestly, since I played Dragalia Lost. Um but I think it's probably it's probably going to be like energy to keep yeah. playing because I do think it has the mobile gaming thing. We're like, oh, you can do six missions in this one hour. Right. There's also a, like a gem system, I believe. You know, mm-hmm. where you can get power up, power ups, ups, and different characters and costumes sure. and stuff. So it's probably stuff like that. Very mobile gaming. Yeah, 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 very mobile gaming. So I'm I'm assuming that's that's pretty much what's getting spent on. But that's that's really cool because Dragalia Lost is its own IP. It's not based on anything. It's just this random Nintendo thing on phones and it's doing well yeah i wouldn't mind seeing it for a 40 dollars switch game you know a maybe a revamped version but you know yeah it has it has a cool world um let me see i'm pulling it up right now also we never really talked about it, but dr mario world came out in the past few weeks um have you do you, do you know what the, have you heard about this the look on your face is like what no yeah there's a dr mario phone game whoa <laughs> news from? to Braden. yeah um i don't know it's been around on the internet for a while came out a few weeks ago and it's just like a little five is little is it just dr mario I yeah well it's like it. a puzzle game yeah wow okay so dragalia lost slash dr mario topic here apparently look at this so yeah it's like i can show you it's a little it's a little puzzle game you can play so as like, the mario overworld yeah and you can play as like bowser or peach like dr bowser dr peach is that wedding no that's dr bowser yeah <laughs> and it's like upside down dr mario so like you have a piece that comes through um kind of brick breaker looking yeah and you put it in and things break interesting yeah so i'm surprised you hadn't heard about this that's i'm really surprised too um the entire reason i brought it up was to say um i could see that catching up because it's very candy crush like and if people get sucked in and just want to keep playing more it's probably one of those games that'll go on infinitely forever yeah so I could see that catching up at least to Pocket Camp, if not to Dragalia Lost, but it's so new. Right. So time will tell. Time will tell. And I learned something. <laughs> that was an interesting little little side yeah. tangent we had there. I didn't expect that to happen. But. Okay. Coming back from our detour, we do have more news. So we found out the original Yokai Watch is going to be coming to the Switch. Have you played Yokai Watch? Uh I have not. Me either. <laughs> but I really do want to. It it I'm a huge Pokemon fan. I play every game that comes out, but it looks like a refreshing twist on Pokemon of sorts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the battle system's different, and the the monsters are you know they're they're spirits. They're not wild creatures. Um, it, it seems like an interesting game, and I it is a remaster, so it's not Yokai Watch Five. It right. is a remaster of the original for the Switch. Yeah. Um, well, they they are making a Yokai Watch for the Switch, I believe. But people thought that maybe this was going to be a rem- like a remake yeah. of the original with the new engine. Mm-hmm. Crazy thing. Just a little side tangent. I don't know if you remember, but it was touted as like the Pokemon killer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And in Japan, it competed, I think. It still does. It, yeah. It's very popular in Japan, but it never caught on here. Yeah. Like, I don't think it caught on anywhere else. And so I, I never picked up the games because I considered it. But um, everything I've heard about them is that they are very kid focused but this re-release which you haven't mentioned yet but it got announced the the new story basically is in october october 10th is when it's the the original 3ds game is being re-released in japan so we don't have a north american or worldwide release date we don't know if it will be coming Mm -hmm. but it it probably will be and if it does i'm definitely gonna pick it up yeah because playing it on on my switch is gonna be way way easier and more fun than on on a 3ds absolutely especially at this point in time and i think it it'll be a good way for people who missed it the first time around to hop on board with mm. the series you know give us the original game what what started it all and uh see if we were into that and then maybe when the yokai watch 5 for the switch you know finally comes out we'll we'll pick that up i think it's a solid strategy by nintendo for sure yeah so, uh, I guess, yeah, on to, the, on to the next. Yeah, you want to pick these up because this might roll into our new game of the week. Yeah. But 
so so we've got two little news stories that uh, have to do with fire emblem three houses um the first one which i thought was pretty significant and is really interesting is uh the voice actor chris neosi i think so um i probably butchered that but i'm gonna say chris neosi um he uh was the main voice actor for fire emblem three houses voiced the protagonist and of course it is a protagonist akin to most rpgs where they barely talk at all but it is like whenever you do well in a battle they'll say exactly as i hoped or you know they'll have a little tagline sure. that they say so there is voice acting to the characters the male and the female but uh chris neosi voiced the male one and evidently there were a bunch of sexual assaults and misconduct abuse with allegations significant others mm -hmm. and yeah it looks like he has admitted to them too so yes. it is it is he posted a very serious um i hope sincere apology to his tumblr uh his professional tumblr page he, professional it, tumblr well it, <laughs> you know he posted a, a pretty long apology letter but regardless nintendo has stated they're going to be replacing his lines with another voice actor mm -hmm. which i think is kind of technologically it's cool that they can do that through a patch um and also just ethically i think it's a sound decision because we shouldn't reward or glorify anyone who is a dirtbag is a dirtbag yeah. and hurts other people yeah yeah um this reminds me a lot of the story that came through this wasn't really a nintendo story but do you remember hearing about judgment from a, a few months ago uh, so judgment is a spinoff game in the uh, yakuza series um and in japan the main uh the main voice actor for the game made the main character and yakuza is not like fire emblem there are probably 200 hours worth or more worth of voice clips Gosh. and stuff from this guy and um in japan drug laws are very different than they are here in america uh even having marijuana on you is a very very serious offense there um and the main voice actor got caught with cocaine um and that's very serious and so they were they um they replaced him mm -hmm. and they took out all of his lines and they got someone else new to come in and they replaced the model too because the character model was modeled to look like the voice actor that's why and i'm pretty sure they were they, they they changed the model and they changed the voice as far as i know i haven't played it myself i want to but it didn't affect the um, american release date hmm. they got everything changed over and that's... so that reminds me a lot of, of that yeah that's very impressive and yeah. it sounds like a, a bit more of a undertaking than nintendo's even gonna oh, have yeah. to do um so yeah but i i think that it's the right decision um, for sure for both studios yeah so then um we'll we'll roll right into the next fire emblem kind of topic nintendo announced on their twitter um that fire emblem three houses is getting a third difficulty post launch because right now even if you beat it there's only two difficulties there's like normal and hard mm -hmm. And even if you beat it on hard, like in you know, some games, like Ultimate Alliance has those two difficulties. And then when you beat it on hard, it unlocks a right. harder mode. Yeah. Um, that's not the case right now. Mm -hmm. But within the next month or so, they're going to be adding an even harder mode, which I think is called insane or like insanity mode or yeah. something. Because um, I find the game hard enough on normal mode. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine playing it. Fire Emblem's hard. I can't imagine playing it on hard, let alone very hard. Yeah. So, but there are people that are into that so the people who need their fix you'll yeah. get your torture mode soon. <laughs> you'll, it'll be there yeah so that that lets us go kind of right into our our main ish topic for the day yeah. uh, our new game yeah. our new release our modern review yeah what you've been playing jake fire emblem three houses Ooh. yeah um now we're recording this on the monday after the game released um so this is by no means a review. I'm about 11 hours in. So this is more of an impressions and we will certainly talk about it in more in the weeks to come. But um man, I'm loving this game. Are you Yes. What what so there's three houses? Yes. So have okay. you decided yet? I'll go into it. Well, I'm 11 hours in. Okay. So I'm just you, making sure. Okay. <laughs> um, I have not played this for the record. Yeah. I I will eventually, but uh but Jake's our our sole player at the moment. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna start off by saying Black Eagles for life. Mm -hmm. um, everyone can can get screwed. Everyone yeah. else, uh, get out get out of here. Black Eagles for life. Um, Bernadetta, best girl, 
no doubt we stand Bernadetta in this household. What does she do? Um, Who is she? Who she's, is Bernadetta? She's a little she's a little purple haired cutie. Mm-hmm. Um, and is she a badass? No. <laughs> uh. She's scared all the time and she just wants to stay in her room and protect Bernadetta yes. at all costs. And every time every time you like select her to move in combat, she goes, Oh no. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. Um yeah, I love Bernadetta. I'll get more into her as I keep talking, but had to get those out of the way. Yep. Um, if you're not a Black Eagle, get out of here. Quit listening. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably gonna pl- I'm probably gonna replay it with the other houses, but they'll never have the same place in my heart that the Black Eagles have. Um, yeah. So in Fire Emblem Three Houses, as I'm sure you've already picked up mm-hmm. early on in the game, um, you uh, will choose one of three houses, which is something that Fire Emblem has done in the past. Um, But usually they're scummy about it and they release three completely different games, which is what they recently did for Fates. Um, They had just three games. So if you wanted to play the whole thing, you had to spend $90. Well, no, more than that. Probably 120 because aren't 3DS games 40? 40. Yeah. Or 40. Yeah. So $120 $120 to get get... all angles of the Mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Of the war. Right. But uh, now in order to make things more streamlined and save us some money. They've ta- they've done away with that, and you can experience all three within this one game. Sixty dollars, that's it. You've got it all. Um, and it's, from what I'm hearing, each playthrough is about seventy hours. That's wild. Yeah. So it's going to take me a while if I do eventually. I don't know if I'm probably going to do a full playthrough with the other houses. I might. I might not. Mm-hmm. It depends. Um, I feel like the after like subsequent playthroughs are going to be a lot quicker, mm-hmm. but maybe not. Uh, does it look like? Should you start a new file with a different house, will you experience different things? Uh, to a point. Because um, what it seems like is... Okay, so let, I'm going to get a little bit into the story. Um, there's not... I mean, obviously, no spoilers. I'm 11 hours in myself. <laughs> so I know that's... Even if I did, quote unquote, spoilers. Not much to spoil. There's not much to spoil for me so far. But the game basically starts out, and from what I had heard, it was the generic, like... Oh, your character has amnesia and they don't remember and maybe that is the case um but i haven't gotten into anything like that so far you start out um there's a bunch of stuff i don't know anything about yet like there is this like goddess ish character like inside of you that will just like talk to you okay and you do, i don't know what that is about yet mm-hmm. but um the game starts with you like interacting with her and she's like wait what's your name what's your birthday yeah are you a male or, or a female Um, I chose the male mostly because of romance options because I don't like, I don't think they really allow same sex romance options. Um, from what I've seen, uh, you can see you level up support things to make like friendships. And then if you go far enough, some of them, it goes into like romance and I'm pretty sure romance is S rank. And pretty much from what I'm seeing, there's only one male I can S rank with. And he is not one I am attracted to <laughs> at all. Uh, but it's okay. I wanted waifus yeah. anyways. So uh, it's the main reason I chose the guy. Um, but it really doesn't make a difference. Because, sure. yeah. But so you choose, you know, you choose your gender. And you um, you have a father in this game, which is cool. He's a mercenary named Geralt. He's really cool. And basically, uh, these three kids just show up at, like, your doorstep. Um, and are like, hey, bandits are trying to kill us. Help. <laughs> and they're the uh, the th- three leaders of the three houses in the school, uh, which was basically like a church school. Okay. Like a ch- an officer school is what it's called. And in this officer school, um, it's where all the nobles basically go to school um, to learn, you know, how to be nobility and yeah, officers. Yeah, and yeah. some t- some commoners get into and stuff. But it, it's like it's like a big prestigious, the most prestigious school yeah. of this country. I can't remember the name of the continent, mm-hmm. but there's this big continent and there's three different. And it is a different continent than any other Fire Emblem game. Yeah, pretty because much. Because every Fire Emblem game, uh, not everyone, but they're generally uh, self-standing games. Yeah. They, they don't follow. They're not sequels. They're not uh, even set in the same world necessarily. Right. And this is this is a standalone. Yeah. The continent is called Fodenland. Dude, they have so many weird yeah. made-up words in this, like Fodland. Fodland. Like, okay, whatever, right. man. Um, but yeah, so there are th- there are three kingdoms to this game. Um, and the continent of Fodland is where it takes place. And the three kingdoms are each of one of the quote-unquote three houses in this school that you're going to choose between. So uh, the one that I chose is the Black Eagles, and they're the Adrestian Empire. And they're to the southwest, and they're the Empire. So they're the... The big bad, yeah. spooky guys. I mean, maybe not even big bad, but they're all about honor. Mm-hmm. And they are, we have been here for thousands of years, and we were the first. It's and, noble. You know, yeah, so nobility. they're they're all about nobility. Um, and then 
There is uh, the Holy Kingdom of Fargus to the north, which was part of the empire at one point, had a rebellion Mm -hmm. and has has gone off to themselves and the rebellion was so noble that the empire had to respect it like they were like crusades or something yeah like like it was it was some but it was against the empire yeah well it wasn't like oh you're doing this for the right reasons it was like they're they were so their leaders and stuff were so like brave and like respectable that they were like okay we respect this cool yeah and so they were given like the okay by like the the empire and the the church of saros which kind of rules over all three Mm -hmm. houses um and kingdoms and then uh there's the uh, leicester alliance to the east which is the uh the really laid back one yeah um they're there you didn't pick them dude (laughs) they are whereas the other two are ruled by kings and Mm. prime ministers and stuff um the the leicester alliance is kind of like a republic Mm-hmm. where i i don't again i've not i didn't choose them so i don't know much about them but from what i picked up it seems like they're kind of ruled by the people and they have elected rulers but like they're not they're much less of a it's more of a country interesting and so all of like their their leader is more of a jokester and stuff yeah. you know um so yeah each of them uh, is tied to a a house in 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 the game there's the black eagles which is the Dresden empire uh the blue lions which is the holy kingdom of fargus and the golden deer which is the leicester alliance mm-hmm. um and in the very beginning of the game when these three kids as i mentioned way earlier um as these three kids come to your doorstep you help them and it turns out that they go to this officer school which is run by the church of saros which is kind of the religion that i mentioned that's not, not necessarily in charge but it's like that's the religion mm-hmm. and they have like the knights of saros and they are like uh we dish out holy you know retribution yeah so like if you go against the church like you will get you will get shot down cool um not cool but (laughs) (laughs) right um and so they kind of run this officer's school and it turns out that your dad Geralt the mercenary used to be a knight of saros Mm -hmm. and one of his old friends is there helping the kids and is like oh my god Geralt, we haven't seen you in years like you gotta come back and he's like guess we're doing this now and so he gets roped back into helping and it turns out there's a professor that just disappeared in in the the school and so they need a new professor and so they're like oh we think your your son or daughter whoever you choose to play as would make a great professor for the school so you just get end up roped into being a professor okay and that's when you have to choose they let you choose which class you want to teach so that's what the three houses the address to, you know the um the black eagles the blue lines the golden deer are each a, a class so that's kind of how you choose which which one you're going to go with now i haven't gotten this far yet but there's two parts to this game um the first part um takes place in the school and you're teaching them and you're a professor and the second part with which i haven't gotten to yet there's a big time skip and these three this isn't a spoiler um but these three empires are going to go to war. There's the fire emblem we all know and love. And so whatever house you choose in the beginning is kind of, you are also choosing your, who you're going to align with in the war Mm -hmm. later. A lot, a lot, it's, it's a hard decision to like choose which house you're going to go with. Um, But I chose, as I feel like most people will, um, based on the characters, you get a, you get a complete rundown before you get to walk around the whole like hub area, like the officer's camp or the officer's school and talk to each of the leaders. And they're like, oh, do you want to hear more about the people that are in our, our, our class? Mm-hmm. And you can go through and you can look at all their stats and everything, but I don't care enough <laughs> about stats. I mean, all the stats are, you're not going to pick a house that's like worse than any of the other ones. Yeah. You know, they're all basically going to be, some of them might be more geared to one play style, but I didn't look into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened to the stories of each, because it gives you like a three sentence summary of this character like oh they're the son of the prime minister Mm -hmm. and they are always fighting with edelgard who's like the leader of the industrial alliance like that's a character named ferdinand and that's like all you get like oh they're the son of the prime minister and they have a rivalry with edelgard and like that's you know nothing you get and i chose it based on those little stories and their appearance because i'm shallow yeah (laughs) i wanted the waifus and husbandos um so i thought pause speaking of husbandos i see two male characters that male characters can romance and i believe 
wow, there's like five female characters that females can romance. Ah. Um, so I'm going to leave the, I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but there's some same sex options oh, for, cool. for those feelings. Maybe I, maybe I should have done female then, but I had, I had heard things that there weren't that yeah. many. So that's why I chose them. Not out. that many, but they are there. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. Um, yeah. I also chose, I really liked the, the three, the three leaders. Oh, I do not remember their names. I remember Edelgard cause she's, she's my girl. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, out of the the three leaders, um, that was immediately I was just like, oh, Edelgard is 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 cute, and she's like the son of the like king or the emperor, or not the son, ooh, the daughter, the daughter of like the emperor, um, and so she's very noble, and that's not normally a character type I'm like into, but for some reason I was like, I dig you, Edelgard, yeah. like I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you, so I was immediately taken by her, and uh, the other guys were cool. But not as much as not as much as her. The Golden Deer is like I really like the Golden Deer's ensemble. But um, I was like I gotta go with my girl Edelgard. How's well, the combat? Yeah, that's that's what we'll get into. Um, so the combat is is really good. I mean, it's Fire Emblem. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a SRPG, so it's strategy RPG. Um, Do you have the grid? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got the grid. Whereas in the past games, probably because of the limitations of the 3ds it would show things in kind of an 8-bit 16-bit art style on the grid and then once you got into battles it would have the 3d models it's the same 3d models the whole time that's cool on the grid so you see them moving around and stuff and when it goes into the little battles it just zooms in and shows them like going to battle flashing yeah um it's it's really good i mean it's probably the best srpg out there i think fire emblem always kind of has been um i recently fairly recently picked up a game called war groove yeah it's kind of an advanced wars fire emblem s game and it has squads of troops like one unit is technically like five soldiers Mm -hmm. is that the same in this game or is each unit like their own character named character so each unit is their own um but something that's brand new to fire emblem this time is you can do you can assign i don't remember the exact word but they're like squads Mm -hmm to them that you can hire battalions that's what they're called okay. battalions you can hire battalions to go with each of your characters and so sometimes i don't necessarily know what has to happen for this to be an option but you'll get an option where you go up to instead of just being like item attack you know wait um it'll say gambit and when you have gambit is basically your character will be like go team and like they'll just like a huge thing of soldiers will go and rush the enemy and just take them down that's really cool. and and whereas normally in the combat you'll you do attack and something that i think is cool is it's not just like a normal jrpg where it's like turn-based so i attack pause they choose they attack every time someone is attacked so say i have edelgard go and attack a swordsman she'll hit her with hit them with her axe and then the swordsman will counter right right and the same thing happens when you're being attacked mm-hmm. so that is a whole nother layer to strategy because there are a lot of times i normally ooh, i'm playing this game on classic mode which there's two modes so there's difficulties there's normal and hard and there's classic and oh and there's classic no. and, and normal so i'm on classic mode because i think that's the pure that's fire permadeath mode it is permadeath so i am very defensive wow because you just send a character out to die like uh one of my strongest characters on my team right now is Ferdinand and he's a lancer and I recently promoted him to like a, a like a riding knight. I don't remember what the necessary the term is, but he's on a horse. Mm-hmm. So he can move way farther yeah. than other characters can. But he's and he's powerful too. He's kind of a tank for me right now at least. Um and so I could send him ahead, but that's dangerous, man. That's dangerous. Yeah. One of the cool things that this game does give give a little little help with that is um, because of the weird goddess that's like in your head, she has the power to turn back time. So every battle you get three options where if you're like, oh crap, uh, I messed up. I messed up. I sent him in there. And I shouldn't have done that. There are three times in every battle where you can turn back time a turn or two turns Neat. and do it again, but only three times. Uh-huh. So if you don't do that three times, you're closing your game and restarting from the last save, which I have done multiple times because <laughs> um, I'm not good at this game. Yeah. Um, I'm not good at any games, but... Um, there are just there's I have had a few battles where I'm just like oh, there was no winning this I am just screwed but yeah so I play a little bit more defensively sure. but that that whole as we got into this the whole countering system lets me play a little defensively so I can be like okay there's an uh, archers and mages over there and they are shooting 
at my characters from afar. So I'm going to put my archer, I'm going to put Bernadetta, who's my main archer, and I'm going to put Hubert, who is one of my, my main mages. I'm going to put them in the front. They don't have as much health, but I know that they can survive this hit. And because, they can counter. And they're going to counter. Whereas if I had Edelgard or Ferdinand in the front, they would just take the hit because they don't have ranged weapons. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to be able to counterattack. So there's a whole other level of strategy there, which is really cool. And I love it. Yeah. But let me tell you, most of my time in this game is not going to be spent in the combat. It's going to be spent in the kind of social modes mm-hmm. because that's what I love in video games. The Persona series is one of my favorite series of games because I'm not a big JRPG guy, but I get super into Persona because I love just running around and trying to mid-max your character in not a way that's just like, oh, I leveled up. I'm going to put points into magic and strength. But like, I'm going to go to the gym today. Yeah. And going to the gym gets me more strength because I'm working out. Or like, mm, I want to make... Ryuji a better character so I'm going to hang out with Ryuji Mm -hmm. and not only does it help them in battle but you get like their whole story yeah that's very similar to the way Fire Emblem works um that's how it's kind of always worked I've never been I've not gotten really much into any other Fire Emblem games but from my from my um from what I've been able to tell that is how a lot of these past few games have worked but in this one specifically too there's a big focus on support Mm -hmm. Um, and I love it. There's a lot to do outside there of is. combat. You go out and you have to decide, oh, am I going to get dinner with this character or that character? You can have tea parties. That's so um, crazy. And you have a tea party with a certain character, and depending on what you talk about, it ups their support and stuff. That's so- and every character has at least one or two with every single character. Like, So there's a bunch of different supports. So like, not only can your character become a support with Edelgard and Hubert, but each of those characters has a support with every other character too, at least in their house. Right. And so not only is it like, oh, I'm going to spend time with Edelgard, but I'm going to put Edelgard next to Hubert in battle. And as they battle, they'll support each other. So that way they'll grow. So they'll do better next to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you're out of battle, you get little cutscenes that are them talking. Something I've thought is really funny is unless they have uh, less two characters can't really get that close all of their like some there there are some that's like oh they can only go up to level b of support class and when they have their little support things it's like let's be friends wow i respect you so much let's be friends but all the other ones where they can go up to like a or s to a point all of their initial support things have been like i take issue with what you're doing and the person is like screw you man and they like are fighting and they're like i hate you and they leave and then the cutscene ends and it's like support class up to c and i'm like yeah and i'm like oh i'm glad they like their support level is up because they just fought and like hate each other maybe that's just a black eagles thing because they're all very not i mean they're not all very callous but some of them are Mm -hmm. um so I don't know about the blue lions or the golden deer, yeah. but that's a lot of how support things have been going. But all that to be said, I spend a lot of time trying to get up my support with like Bernadetta because I love Bernadetta and I want to marry her and I think you can. So um, uh, I, I'm i working on that. Um, and then I'm trying to get my support up with Edelgard because I love Edelgard. She's like my main person. And then another thing, dude, this might be a longer episode because there's a lot to talk about with Fire Emblem. Not only do you have your class, you're not just stuck with that. You can recruit people from other classes and have them join your class. And just so we're clear, you don't mean like swordsman class, archer class. You mean like the three houses classes. So like, for instance. um, You can recruit some golden deer to your black eagles. Yeah, there's a character named uh, Lysithia, um, who I think is super cute in the golden deer. And she's a healer. And every every single month, you can choose one character from another class that will help you in battle, just regardless of support or anything. And so I was like, oh, this character is cute. I'm going to use her in my battle. Turns out she's another healer, which I don't know. I'm assuming every class has at least one healer, but I've only had one healer. So having her as a second healer is amazing. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, not only do I think she's cute and I want to have her because... I think you kill everyone else later in the story. I'm like, I don't want to kill her. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, so like, her. just because of that, I, I want that. But also she's really useful in combat. Mm-hmm. So I'm working my butt off to get uh, Lysithia uh-huh. on my team. That's funny. And, and the way that you do that, you can, there's two ways. One, you can either impress them with your stats. 
so like Lysithia specifically because I've been grinding at her and I want her um her uh if you have high faith and magic skill um she will that's join what impresses you. her yes but if you just spend a lot of time with them and have your support skill go up on them you can bypass that that takes more work from what I'm seeing yeah but that's like what I'm doing with Lysithia right now because my character is like a swordsman mm -hmm. and is speedy um, and does not use magic. Yeah, not much magic to speak at of. all. <laughs> no. Um, so I'm really just like I have a tea party with her, yeah. and uh, I invite her to dinner, and I'm using her a lot in battle. And when you use her a lot, it increases that support stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to recruit her. And there's like a few other characters. Like there's a character uh, named uh, Marianne in the Golden Deers that I'm hoping to recruit. And let's see, where's another one? Dude, they're like all from the Golden Deer. There's a character named mm -hmm. Leoni or Leoni. God, Who I... do you hate? Who's the third house? Three, uh, the Blue Lions. The Blue Lions. I don't like the Blue Lions. Yeah, clearly. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I mean, their characters are cool. Um, there's some good characters. I just have not interacted with them at all. I think there is a character named Felix that is a swordsman that I might end up picking up just because I'm going to have swords class, sword stuff already. Yeah. So I might end up recruiting him just because I'm. I mean, he's a cool character. It looks like he's cool, but I, I just don't interact with them mm -hmm. as much. Now, there are some limits. I haven't seen all of them, but some characters, if you're in a certain house, you just cannot recruit. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a character in the Golden Deer named Hilda, and she immediately caught my eye because she has pink hair, mm -hmm. and uh, I just love characters with pink hair. Yeah. Um, so initially, I was like, oh, I'm going to recruit Hilda, and you cannot recruit Hilda if you're in the Black Eagles. Gotcha. You just can't. Probably because she's very, like... She's like a mean girls type character like oh my god like i don't want to do any work yeah. and maybe because that's so different than the black eagles maybe that's why you just couldn't recruit them but there i have seen that there are a few other limitations oh wait i think she might be so every main character every leader of the household has a like bodyguard type character and i think she might be the one to the golden deers leader so you cannot recruit them the at all no matter what yeah so like for edelgard hubert is like her like bodyguard and so he cannot be recruited by anyone else. So maybe that's why. But then on top of that, there is a whole stat. There's a bunch of staff that just works with the church that you can also do social links with. That's why. And I don't know if I don't know how they come into the war later. But I know that if you get like like they can join your team eventually. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily know how. But yeah, there's like ten characters just in the church that you can spend time with. And I'm the game goes by on a monthly basis and. It's not like Persona where every day you can do things. It's like you have Sunday to either teach classes uh, or, go, or actually it's do a seminar, explore, which means walking around doing little missions, giving gifts to people, stuff like that, or grind and do battles. You get that day and then on the next day, which I think is either a Sunday or a Monday, I can't remember, is when you do your lectures and then the next of the week just skips and you'll walk through it. So maybe like, oh, this day is a character's birthday. So you can have a tea party with them. Or, oh, a social link thing is going to happen this day. But the whole rest of the week just skips. So you can go through months pretty quickly. And I think there's only 12 months in part one. And I'm like four months in. And so I'm like freaking out. Because I'm like, I, want, I have to recruit all these characters because I don't want yeah. them to die. So, yeah. Oh, gosh. I probably that. I don't know if that's if this is going to sound good. It probably sounds ranty. Dude, well, there's just like <laughs> layers, though. Like, I mean, it, it you, I think you got around a lot of the different aspects of the game pretty well, and like they do fit together to form a cohesive game. That the support affects the combat, and the combat can come back and depending on who dies or who survives, like can affect what goes on in your social life. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and people can just die. I. I I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah. But I wonder how that like affects the story. Because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure after like the second battle, you're fighting bandits. And so if Bernadetta dies, like she's dead. Mm -hmm. Like, and I wonder how that affects things. Right. Because there are characters, I mean, not not big characters, like you cannot die. If you die, game over. Mm -hmm. And your leader cannot die. Mm -hmm. So like my character's name is Ryuji, because in every anime game I name my character Ryuji. Mm -hmm. Um but so I have if he dies or Edelgard dies, it's game over and you have to start over. But like, there are other characters that show up in cutscenes. Maybe not, I don't know about cutscenes, but in like little story ish, like mini cutscenes. Mm -hmm. And like, I wonder how that affects things. 
like does everyone i'm sure there's a whole motivation thing where you have to get characters motivated so you can teach them better i bet that just destroys motivation oh man that's and like yeah your classmate just doesn't come to school the next day yeah dude i don't i don't know if there's anyone that plays fire emblem on classic mode that just lets characters die because i'm pretty sure i will restart i will spend two hours in a mission well, i was about to say you might ought to let one die at some point find no. someone you can tolerate no and just see what happens no no maybe i'll do another save and i'll just see go. what happens yeah. but uh i don't know if i can handle that because that's another thing even in combat so like you know there's hit like percentages to hit things and people will do criticals yeah and i find myself i'm sitting there i'm like okay ferdinand uh go and attack this guy and ferdinand misses and i'm like no ferdinand what are you doing like ferdinand why or like oh okay let's ha i'm gonna send caspar in to hit this guy and this guy's got like 30 health and i'm like oh it's gonna take two turns to kill him and caspar gets a critical and kills him in one and i'm like yes caspar go that's my man and i will literally say that like out loud mm -hmm. while i'm sitting there so i've got these connections to like each of these characters even ones that i don't like as much I am connected. I don't know if I could let any of these characters die. Like you have a team now. You're a team, and so you and don't that's saying lose a lot about this game. Because there's a lot of like like the graphics aren't amazing. Like they look good, but some of the backgrounds look pretty pixelated and stuff. So there's a lot of like cutscenes are like at a slower FPS than the rest of the game. So it sticks out. So it's definitely not a perfect game, but it's i'm very attached to these characters mm -hmm. and that doesn't happen to me a lot in video games the only other game i can really say for that really happens i mean a game like this is persona i mean when i play games like the last of us and uncharted i mean i get attached to those characters but it's a little bit different especially in fire emblem because i control the fates of these characters whereas in persona if a character falls in battle they're not dead yeah they just come back and you can play that game like this you can't or you can't play this game like that where norm, is that you can play mode, yeah normal not, mode as opposed to classic yeah where you can play it where oh if people die in battle it's no big deal but i feel like since it's that's not the way the game was meant to be played because yeah if all my characters could die and they just come back in the next game i feel like i'd be less attached to them the stakes are there mm -hmm. all that to be said fire Emblem three houses is very good i implore you listener and you brayden <laughs> to pick it up and play it's so good um we'll talk about it more later not at this length because i have rambled for a long time about this which i apologize for um i learned a lot yeah so, uh, yeah no. but um yeah so so i think i think that's going to do it for our fire emblem talk so if, right now i mean i'm not going to score it but sure. if i like if i had to i'm I, i'm i'm thinking this is going to be a 9.5 or a 9 like it's a very the only other game i've ever i mean in my reviewing quote-unquote career which i've only been reviewing for like newspapers and stuff for the past year or so but the only other game i've given a nine or above is red dead redemption 2 mm -hmm. i gave that a 9.5 and because i don't know if i'm ever going to give a game a 10 because all games have little bugs and stuff so yeah i'm that guy who's like there's no perfect no 10. 10 yeah for some reason i feel like with movies i can give them five stars and be like yeah it's not perfect but it's a five star but yeah. games are games are a little different um but I think it's a very different game than Red Dead. But I think this might be my second 9.5. Again, I'm 11 hours in of probably an 80-hour game. Yeah. So we'll, we, we will revisit. We'll revisit it slightly. I'm glad yeah. you're enjoying it. Yeah, and man. I hope, I hope those that are playing it out there are too. I'll join you one day. Yeah. Yeah. So before we move on to our gym of the week, our old school gym, we figured we'd wrap up a little on Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 as well. Um, I beat the story mode and have been playing it pretty intensively since, since I got it about this time last week, I guess, over a week ago. And it's good. I thoroughly enjoyed the game and I'm still enjoying it, I think. I've reached a plateau. I'm just grinding my butt off, trying to unlock these last couple characters and these last couple costumes. They are all just reskins, like we noticed or noted last time. Which, you know, kind of disappointing. No new models. A lot of grinding. I'm just, I'm kind of stuck. On the Infinity Trials, I don't have much more room to grow. My character levels are as high as they're going to get, it seems. I've not capped them out. But I'm just getting tired of playing and trying to 
level up these characters a little bit. Yeah, because as we mentioned last week, it's a repetitive game. Mm -hmm. So once you get into grinding, whereas I will grind in Fire Emblem Three Houses and it's fun, Mm -hmm. grinding is not not that fun in Ultimate Alliance Three. Yeah, I don't I don't mean to sound so pessimistic about the game because I'm still enjoying it and like I I. I'm still playing with the same core squad of characters, essentially. Because I have to. None of these 30 other characters that I kind of ignored along the way are leveled high enough to do anything. And so I'm still with the same four team of four. And I don't know. I'm going to keep my rating at a seven. I just, it didn't grow on me, um, but it did not. I don't dislike the game anymore either. It's a solid fun game i played online a little bit and that helped uh with some random folks i just joined a a couple rooms the online system not perfect but yeah i'm gonna keep my rating at a seven and last time i said oh that's a good seven i'm gonna call it a mediocre seven this time Mm. but seven solid seven yeah i uh i i played i played more than i did when we talked last week but i did hit obviously that fire emblem wall uh, I, so I haven't finished the game. I ha- well, I haven't gotten as far into it as you have, I guess. I have not played it that much. But um, I did write my official review for it. Uh, I, 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 I finished at a 7.5 is where I, I landed. And I think that's a good 7.75 7. is a good place. Um, you said you didn't let the grinding affect you. I think I think it did, though. I, it, yeah. Yeah. It caught up to me. Yeah. So I definitely, I think we'll we'll end maybe our Ultimate Alliance 3 talk by saying it's a good game, but not a good long game. Yep. And if you, if you have somebody to play with, I think it would be a different story. I'm playing solely by myself, except for like two Infinity Trials online. And if you like Marvel, you will enjoy the game. I think it's fun seeing your characters in a new, refreshing way. Um, but yeah. For sure. Cool. So... On to the gym, I suppose. On to the gym of the week. What did you bring us, Jake? This week, um, I decided let's talk about The Legend of Zelda. Which one? On the NES. Wow. That's an... Yeah. I love I love your surprises if I didn't have you play the game before yeah. so you could talk about it. <laughs> oh, it's, so it is an amazing game in that it brought so much to the world. It started my favorite video game series of all time, The Legend of Zelda. The, for the 2D games, it established so much. Minish Cap for the Game Boy Advance is one of my favorite Legend of Zelda games. It's 2D, but it, it it's so inspired by this original game. It's the top down, it's the bad guys on the overworld screen, you enter the dungeons. That was all done for the first time in this game in 1986 Mm -hmm. like i don't know what do you have to say about it um whereas you seem to be a mega zelda fan dude i'm not Mm -hmm. um before breath of the wild i had never finished a zelda game wow yeah because um i would always start them because everyone well i guess that's not true i had finished the only one i had finished was zelda nes oh cool um, which is the reason i brought it here but i was not a zelda fan i would always pick up the games like link to the past an Ocarina of Time. There's some still I haven't played. Like I, pl- I played all the DS ones. I haven't played Majora's Mask. That's my um, favorite game. Of I, know. Time. <laughs> I know. I know. To be continued. Ooh, we'll yeah. talk about that yeah, later. I will play it eventually because of you probably. Yeah. Um, but I I would always pick them up and I'd always get maybe halfway through and I just stop because I just wasn't really enjoying them, with the exception of Zelda NES. I want to say it was probably ten years ago or so. From a very from a young age for me. I got into retro games and I remember I went to a record store in the area when I was like eight or nine and I found the golden NES cartridge and I was like, oh, Zelda, like I've heard of this, like I like Zelda or like I should like Zelda, you know, I hadn't really played it in the past and they had it for like five bucks or something like that, like something way cheaper than it should be. But so I picked it up then and tossed it into my NES and I fell in love with it. I mean... I grew up in the age of the guide online. So I think the first time I played it, I had a guide open that was like, here are all the secrets. Here's how to maximize your playthrough. And I think the first time I did not, I mean, I went in blind when I first started it, but it's, it's one of the first like open world games. It really, 
is. And I want to talk about that. So when you first started, when I first start the game, you go in the cave, you grab the sword, and then what, dude? Like, exactly. You are just out there. And so I brought along a little bit of show and tell, actually. This is the instruction manual for oh. The Legend of Zelda. And I don't know what this is. It's just some sort of map. But so things were different in 1986. I wasn't born. I, I was born eight years later in 94. But like the internet wasn't around. You couldn't find the guides. And look at this instruction manual. It is 25 pages of hints, tips. It has every item that you're going to collect in the game. It has all the bad guys laid out. It has maps for the first two levels. They weren't just throwing you in blind like it feels like <laughs> when you turn it on today. Dude, I, I love the art in this. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it cool though? Like, that's the original Zelda art. I don't, and so I still think it's incredibly confusing when you turn this game on for the first time because you're just in the middle of nowhere. They don't tell you where to go. But if you bought this game in 1986, it came with that instruction booklet, which set you off on the right start. It has the story in there, right? That is two pages of basically context for the game that you're about to play and they basically expected you to read this yeah this is this is so good you have a like do you have a boxed copy at home of this no or? we we just have the the instruction booklet we don't have a box for it but how'd um, you how'd you come across this instruction booklet i want to say a yard sale we've really had this for a, a really long time um and I, I do think it was just a yard sale at some point yeah i've just got the cartridge with the nothing else right i don't know it's it's a very old-fashioned concept and it says like creating your own link character as <laughs> if like they hadn't named the character yet but yeah it you you weren't as blind as it feels going in it's on the switch uh nes collection yeah um what is what is that called I don't know, nothing nothing fantastic, yeah. but it is on there, and that's how I replayed it this past week. It's on just about any Nintendo system you can yeah. imagine. Yeah, oh, for sure, and it's, you know, you can even get the NES Classic, and it's on there. Mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of replaying it recently on that, the Switch NES library, and they recently added the, like, turn time back thing, you know, yeah. like the, the re, the... Rewind. Rewind, that's the word I was looking for. Um so I got to play it, and every time I would like take an unnecessary hit, I would just like go back like two <laughs> like two frames. Or every time I die, I'd be like, oh, I'll just start that room over. Yeah. So that was convenient. Not not the way the game was originally played, right. but it was definitely convenient for me, who was taking little breaks from Fire Emblem, which I was like, oh, I want to just keep playing Fire right. Emblem. But then I was like, I do love Zelda NES, so it was fun to go back and play. But it was a nice little time saver. <laughs> well, and fun enough on the Switch, they had that special mode too, where you start with all the items. Oh, really? And, uh, I haven't played like, that. Full hearts, and and so it's an interesting way to to start it as well. Like you're not yeah. going to be nearly as lost, and uh, well, you'll still be as lost. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, but you know, at least you have weapons to defend yourself with from the start so i think that's interesting one major feature of this game was the ability to save it has save yeah. files and that was the first time save files were included on like a cartridge itself they um like metroid had a password system mm -hmm. where it, when you wanted to quit it would give you like a code to write down and then you'd have to put it back in when you started it up and it would start you with like in the same place with all the same items but this is the first time you just hit save and turn it off and you could turn it back on and be right where you left off. Yeah. And I mean, talk about revolutionary, not only with the open world stuff, which I'm sure there was probably a game before that did that, but Zelda was the first game that really hit that is a quasi open world, you know, where you can walk to any dungeon. And like yesterday when I started, when I played it or the day before, um, I don't, I don't have this map memorized, you sure. know, less, a, a lot of people do. So I was just wandering around and I definitely walked into a dungeon that was way harder <laughs> than like front with my three hearts and no items. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm getting out of here immediately because I'm just, I'm getting crushed. Yeah. And that's so cool that it allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's something that even a lot of open world games don't allow you to do. You know, they're open world, but it's still like, oh, you can't go to this thing yet. You're not powerful enough. Right. Which is why Zelda has kind of done that with a lot of stuff. Like Breath of the Wild recently kind of recaptured that. Yeah, just 
pick your direction and they'll let you go for right it. like you uh you walk out and you don't have any clothes but you can walk right up to ganon yeah and try and beat him <laughs> right yeah a pretty revolutionary game in that regard i think the bosses were all well the bosses were all what am i trying to say a new concept i don't know i'm just this was a game that introduced a whole lot that is so standard to so many games and other games had bosses but just like a dungeon boss and then you, yeah. you get your power up at the end and there's always a there's you know it is kind of metroidvania ish in the way that there's a specific way that you're going to take down these bosses like with the the pretty much i don't know if it's necessarily the first boss but the the first dungeon that i did the other day that seemed easy and seemed to be okay this seems to be the first one again i am not i have not studied this game in the way that many have so forgive my people are going to be listening to this being like what do you mean he doesn't know yeah, yeah, yeah. everything but you know it's that it's that that boss where it's like a dragon mm -hmm. at the end and he shoots out the fire in like three ways and um you can't hit him with your sword but you've probably picked up bombs before then and you just and and once you figure out oh bombs hurt him it becomes really easy because you just drop three bombs there and he dies like like really quickly whereas if you're trying to use every other thing nothing hurts him yeah and it's that kind of it was probably again i don't want to speak definitively but it was one of the first games that had something like that where you learn yeah. as you play and and you, you have to adapt yeah. and you can get these different items like there's the candle that burns things that'll work against certain enemies and there's the bow and there's the boomerang you know it, it really is 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 a revolutionary game yeah and like I said, it's it's it, it stands out to me that a lot a lot of these NES games I don't think hold up so great. Um, oh, they don't. They're foundations for games that came later, but they don't themselves stand up very well. Right. Uh, but Zelda definitely does. The fact that I, as a as a kid in the in the aughts, picked up a game from thirty year twenty thirty years in the past. And was able to have fun with it as a child where as a kid you do not appreciate things like that you know you just you want what is fun right now what is entertaining right now and i was able to pick it up and turn away from these big 3d games that i was playing and play a little 2d game and still have fun with it and the fact that i 10 years 10 15 years removed from that moment can pick it up now and go from playing something like ultimate alliance 3 or fire emblem three houses which are these huge massive insanely complicated games and pick up zelda nes and have a blast playing it that says something about that game's quality and it it shows why i mean that that game got such a following and why it's so popular now and the series is popular and as as the years will go on i will play more you better but you best play. <laughs> come on but zelda nes will probably always be my favorite nes game because there are not very many NES games, even the Mario games. Like, I don't know. I just don't really have the patience for them. I love them, and we'll talk about them, I'm sure. Um, but they're not. They're not Zelda NES. It's a. It is a highlight of the NES system. Uh, did you know anything about Second Quest? Because not that, not really. Well, and so later Zelda games like Ocarina of Time and uh, what else? There's a couple of Zelda games that have Master Quest. Mm -hmm. um, they called this one Second Quest in the original NES game. Right. Um, whereas when you beat the game, they like moved all the dungeons, like they changed the puzzles and like the bad guys, and uh, it's essentially a whole new game. You're gonna get the same items and fight the same bosses, but everything's moved around and much more difficult. Yeah, it's like the first new game plus. Exactly. It's in 1986 there weren't games like this where it's basically twice the game you know you're you're you think you, right. you're paying for this one game and then they just totally unlock a whole new it's it's so cool that that caught on and it was popular because talk about being ahead of your time right you know and there is probably a world where this didn't catch mm -hmm. on because it was so advanced mm -hmm. you know um but i'm glad that it did and i'm glad that it really revolutionized yeah gaming Absolutely. And influenced thousands of games afterwards. Forever thankful for the save system. Especially you and your classic Fire Emblem oh, yeah. Fates status. For sure. It's really interesting. I, I ought to pop in my NES copy now and see if that saving still works. Because, you know, those batteries will die. Yeah. My uh, 
I have a couple Game Boy Color games. Like my my Pokemon Gold won't save anymore. Oh, really? I'm really sad about that. I'm waiting for the day when my like yeah my Game Boy Color games. I haven't I haven't tested those in a while either. But like, oh man, when my like Pokemon Emerald won't save anymore. Oh, I'm gonna be so sad. Yeah. I mean, you can get those batteries replaced, but that's such a process and a hassle. But yeah, I'm. I feel good about the praise that we've showered over Zelda at the yeah, moment. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, you, if you're listening to a Nintendo podcast, chances are you have played Zelda NES. But if you haven't, I implore you, do it. If you have a Switch, which you should, mm-hmm. um, you it's very easy to play because you can. It's free, right? If you have Switch Online, so you do have That's to pay for Switch is. Online. But Switch Online is incredibly cheap. I think it was twenty dollars for a year. I have, and then I I'm in a family plan with just twelve friends well really it's one friend and all of his other friends so i pay two dollars a year for switch online and that comes with the nest collection is what we're getting at yeah so it's so easy to play on there so and then even if you there's so many other ways you can you can get it on well there's other ways to play it on other systems um i was gonna say on the wii on the wii u but actually the 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 virtual console the virtual console is closed on the wii it's still up on the wii u um but and then there's the NES Classic, if you can get your hands on one of those. Any way that you can get to play this game, I don't think you'll regret. And don't feel bad it. for using a guide, because the original game came with a guide in the form of an yeah. instruction booklet. So you're not stupid for being lost. Don't get discouraged. Yeah, but yeah, so that's our that's our thoughts on Zelda NES. A true Nintendo. Yeah, if as, I do say so myself. As, as true as true as they get. Yes, sir. We, we need to have like some kind of virtual Hall of Fame where we, we enter a Nintendo. Gym. That would be fun. We'll work on that. Yeah. So like, welcome. Let's welcome the Legend of Zelda to the Nintendo Gym Hall of Fame. <laughs> Round of applause. Well, all right, guys, that kind of wraps up what we have to say for this week. We really appreciate you listening in. Yeah, so thank you for, for bearing with me rambling about Fire Emblem. He's just excited, guys, <laughs> and you should be too. But my name's been Brayden. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm Jake. It's been a pleasure, and this has been Nintendo's. Yeah, thanks, guys.